Hi guys, good evening, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and greatest installment of the Halloween franchise, Halloween Kills, which dropped today and in theaters and on Peacock. Well, I mean, technically it comes out tomorrow, but you know, Thursday night screenings and everything. Anyway, just got back from watching it with my friends in my local theater. Really, really enjoyed it. Cannot wait to see it again. Before I get to all of that, of course, please be warned. This is a spoiler, and I mean spoiler, 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 spoiler-filled review. So if you've not seen Halloween Kills and you fully intend to watch it uh, opening weekend, do not keep watching or listening to what I'm about to say, because I'm going to jump into a whole slew of spoilers starting now. Spoiler warning is, is issued. You have been warned let's dive right back into it first and foremost they promised us intense graphic brutality and they delivered these were some of the most violent bloodiest shocking kills i have ever seen michael carry out in any of the halloween movies whether it's in this particular franchise starting with 20 halloween 2018 in this film or if it's from any other halloween film i've ever seen you know i'm not really going to count the crappy rob zombie one from 2007 because i hated that that one and I don't remember it that well because I hated it so much but this movie had intense shocking bloody violent deaths and I loved it this was the kind of gnarly shit I was hoping to see in this movie because they promised us you know big scale horror that was really upping the ante with the violence and the brutality and just how there would be nothing nothing would be held back and I think it delivered on that part. Also, you know, I loved what an ensemble film this was. You know, you had the returning legacy characters. Granted, most of them ended up dying, which wasn't that shocking. You know, speaking of shocking, of all the character deaths that occurred, you know, of characters who we liked and were invested in and people we didn't really know and were just there to be murdered... Those deaths didn't really surprise me that much, but I was rather shocked to see uh, Karen die, Lori Strode's daughter, because um, I thought for a second there maybe uh, you know she was going to make it to at least the next and third film, the final film, Halloween Ends. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, they killed her off so that Lori would have even more incentive to go batshit crazy and just unload on Michael's ass in the uh, third and final film coming out presumably next year next fall i think halloween ends we'll see but um i that one was pretty surprising i thought she would at, at least die or last until halloween ends but nope they offed her at the end of kills and you know the other character deaths didn't really surprise me that much i mean they were shocking to watch but when i say surprise i mean like oh they ended up killing off you know sheriff brackett or tommy or uh lonnie or cameron you know I wasn't too surprised, but the one character, uh, not necessarily a death, but a almost a rebirth that really surprised me was Hawkins. I was so happy that they brought back Deputy Frank Hawkins, and I'm delighted that they did because he was one of my favorite parts of Halloween 2018, and I was so bummed out when I thought they had killed him in that film when the crazy doctor stabbed him in the neck. But hey, the son of a bitch survived, thanks to Cameron too. You know, this kid, despite being so obviously terrified of approaching Michael before realizing his father's blood was dripping on him, this kid had some guts. You know, he saw Hawkins lying in the street and he clearly saw somebody was hurt. And, you know, he hopped the fence to go rush up to him to see if he was hurt or not. So good on Cameron. You know what? Good on him. And, um, you know, the other thing that I loved about this movie was that I had always wanted to see a film or just see the aftermath of a violent slasher or just a violent horror film. Like, show us the aftermath. Show us the authorities cleaning up all the murder scenes and clearing out all the bodies and the people reacting, the community reacting. And unfortunately, you know, they also showed us the reactions and the revelations of loved of people learning their loved ones had been murdered. Like, Oscar's mom seeing his body in the hospital that broke my damn heart i felt bad for her and then the community being in such an uproar about it and i think this movie is also an answer to a lot of people's criticism one of their many one of people's many criticisms of horror films well why do people just sit around waiting for bad shit to happen why they do, why don't they go out there and do something why don't they try finding the monster or the person doing all this and that's exactly what the townspeople did thanks to tommy you know he incentivized a lot of people i liked how there were different groups of town folk a lot of them whom ended up murdered of course but they're like different small groups of characters all with the same goal of finding and killing michael whether or not any of them actually achieve that goal is another story but 
I liked how, you know, it, it felt like an ensemble film in that sense. It kind of reminded me of Infinity War, Avengers Infinity War, where we had small groups of characters and we'd be following a different story with a different group of characters, all of them working towards the same goal before coming together. And that kind of, kind of didn't happen in this movie. But I will say the part that I absolutely loved, my favorite part of the film, and I was so, so, so hoping for a scene like this, the way they had been teasing the story and the details of this movie for the past year or so. I was so happy they delivered on this. I loved, loved, loved the scene when Michael is taunted into the street by Karen after he kills Cameron and injures Allison towards the end of the film and he follows her into the street. He goes to pick up his mask and sure enough, as I was hoping and suspected, it is another trap brilliantly, brilliant, brilliantly laid out by Karen, this time with the backup of the townspeople and everybody, including Sheriff Brackett, was there to deliver that badass awesome line it's halloween everyone's entitled to one good scare while pointing his gun at michael and then the townspeople just lay into him and michael puts up a pretty damn good fight you know i don't know what the son of a bitch is if he's human or superhuman or whatever he is or if he's just coursing with adrenaline where he can't register or feel pain but the crazy motherfucker is the boogeyman because it's like no wonder the townspeople call him that because it's like you stab it and shoot him repeatedly and he just won't die and I was so hoping to see a scene like this where if not all the townspeople, a decent number of townspeople with like the lead characters like Brackett and Tommy and Karen and whatnot surrounded Michael and just beat the living shit out of him before ultimately killing him or because that was a possibility or uh, him suddenly springing back to life and killing all of them, which is unfortunately what ended up happening. But God, that was such an awesome, satisfying reveal when the car headlights started to turn on and Michael realized he was surrounded and they started taunting him. That was fucking awesome and it gave me the best kind of goosebumps and brackets lined everyone's entitled to one good scare got a big reaction from the theater and the audience we we're all like yeah yeah you know we all got excited and it delivered you know this movie was exciting it was intense you know it had some pretty scary moments there were a couple scenes where i jumped you know the scene that probably got me the most was uh, hawkins suddenly springing back to life and then a few minutes later you know when uh, the guy turns on his bathroom light and there's michael and then he smashes the light and uh uses it to kill the guy or at least come at him or something that part got me too so this was an exciting satisfying violent horror movie and i really really enjoyed it and can't wait to see it again and i'm also intrigued to see how they're going to top themselves or outdo themselves with halloween ends you know because i realized man Lori kind of sat this one out but then it made a lot of sense to me because this movie was more about the community of haddonfield rather than just Lori and her family that's what halloween Halloween 2018 was for and about this film they got to still be involved but not as much because this was really about all the other people and characters who are affected directly or indirectly by the Michael Myers saga so it made sense to me that Lori wasn't as involved in this plus she's probably going to have one hell of a memorable climactic showdown with him in Halloween ends in the third and final film so I was still very very satisfied with this movie can't wait to see it again I really enjoyed it I hope you guys did too what did you think of Halloween Kills I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings on it thank you so much for watching have an awesome rest of your night Halloween Kills is now playing in theaters and very soon in a few hours we'll be streaming on Peacock for those of you have that who have that streamer watch it try to see it on the biggest screen possible because it is a big scope film with so many characters thank you so much for watching have a great rest of your night and of course until next time what's your favorite scary movie